I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah. In today's video, we are going to visit the San Antonio Missions, the historic Menger Hotel. We're gonna ride to the top of the Tower of the Americas and take a cruise along the river walk. <laughs> Is hot. Oh, it is now San Antonio Rally Day 1 and we've got ourselves a neighbor in Etravato. All right, everybody is arriving here at the rally. I'm just gonna do a quick video here. Here's Mr. Robert Polk. Here's Mr. Rios. And Jeffrey with the Winnebago trend. Uh, that's the one that I want. When I grow up. Ooh, I'm getting some condensation on my lens here. I apologize for that. The and there are Greg and Linda with the Cougar fifth well, wheel. We are spent some time hanging out with our uh, our guests here and uh, now. Let me go back. We also have Claudia and Larry. They're staying in a camper van on the other side. Actually, let me see what these what these folks are up to here. Dual and cameras. This one will get uploaded. This one will never see the slide again. <laughs> 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 getting ready to, 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 for our first uh, dinner here at yes. uh, the RV Caravan yeah. with us rally. And uh, here's almost everybody. And there's the pool, very, very inviting. Well, actually, it's, it's full of people now, but it was very inviting earlier. And um, yeah. We spent the rest of the day getting to know each other, eating delicious barbecue, and getting acquainted with the plan for the following days. Well, good morning. Here we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, you have to say, we well, Palantina woke up at the crack of dawn to get us some breakfast. And let me tell you, we're gonna need that energy. Let's go explore. Today, we're going to take advantage of San Antonio's public transit system, which is called VIA. Well, as you can see, we're all having a great time here at the city bus. They have one 7 and 31 day passes, and included in the price of the rally, we've got a 7 day pass. There's a bunch of lost tourists here in the middle of downtown, I don't know what's going on. Que <laughs> bola! <laughs> And here we are, by the Alamo, which happens to be one of the five missions. Here's the cenotaph commemorating the Battle of the Alamo, which we saw two episodes ago. Got all these uh, models here of the Alamo in different time periods. And be careful because the surface may be hot. And I imagine at 2 p.m., yeah, that's the Alamo right there. And uh, there it is. Well, we're here early. I don't think the Alamo is open yet. So we're going to take the bus to the other missions here. We just took a group picture. I have to figure out how to do a, a Photoshop Paul Ing later, but we'll figure that out. We're gonna take another bus to the other four missions and Tina is in charge of the plan. Yes, John. Yeah. All right. This is Mission Felicia. Thank you. No, Mission Concepcion. There we go. 
These five Spanish colonial missions were established from 1718 to 1731 by Franciscan priests and we're starting here at the southernmost one, Mission Concepcion. This is one of the oldest original stone churches in the country. And this is what remains of one of the many colorful frescoes that adorn the building. All these missions here, they were built in order to convert the natives to Catholicism and the Spanish ways, which in fact resulted in a mixture of cultures, which shaped the rich cultural heritage of San Antonio. That's a very high-tech donation system for such an old church. Here's another very faded fresco here in the chapel. Most of these frescoes were revealed after a very painstaking cleanup process which began back in 1988. No, I, don't think it's a I think Paul wants to do a confession but he can't find the priest. Here on the library's ceiling is one of the most famous frescoes. Meanwhile, outside, it's picture time! It is certainly picturesque. By the way, the facade of the church would have also been covered in colorful frescoes now long gone. I think Mission San Jose is the next one now. This is Mission San Jose, which is apparently the bigger one. Let's see how this thing works. Well, yeah, this is the largest of the missions. That's probably why this is where they have the visitor center. Like a walled city in there, this is Mission San Jose. The complete name, Mission San Jose y San Miguel de Aguayo, built on the banks of the San Antonio River, it is, as I said, the largest one, earning it the name Queen of the Missions, and it does have a very large courtyard here. Let's step inside the Indian quarters and the bastion which gave protection against Indian attacks. By the way, it is perhaps a good idea to stand close to one of the guided tours so you can eavesdrop. For example, I originally thought this might be some kind of apartment. We just, we just got the other tour and apparently that wasn't an apartment, that was like a... like a, where the soldiers would stand guard. You know, that's why they had the, the, the holes, you know? But this is more like an apartment that looks like a fireplace or something right there. And this would have been the living room. No, inside, no indoor plumbing for sure. This looks like some kind of oven, perhaps. It is all so well preserved. I mean, some of it, I suspect, rebuilt or restored. And there's Paul standing by the workshop foundations, now long gone. There's the church, the second permanent church built by mission inhabitants, completed in 1782 and restored as you see it in 1930. La Ventana de Rosa 
the Rose Window is considered one of the finest examples of Baroque architecture in North America. Let's step inside the church. This is quite impressive. Yes, this is by far the most impressive altar so far, and so well preserved, or restored I should say. Much of what is visible today here at Mission San Jose was reconstructed by the Works Progress Administration in the 1930s. Here by the entrance they have an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the patron saint of Mexico. such a beautiful mission, particularly the convento area with all those arches. So this must be the first step. Here's a close-up of the beautiful facade. There's Saint Joseph at the top center, holding baby Jesus. Here's the granary, which was a warehouse and surplus storage. And they have this large model of the mission, as it would have looked back in the day. Let's go to the back. There's supposed to be a restored grist mill. This was the first mill in Texas. It was built in order to add wheat to the traditional Indian diet. Such beautiful and unique vegetation. This particular plant called soto or desert spoon. And it is pretty unique to this area. And these ruins, I'm, I'm sure they're in the map. I'll look them up. Actually, those ruins not pointed out as anything important in the map, so... Let's continue. We still have two more missions, although I really doubt they will be as large or as impressive as this one. The next mission San Juan Capistrano. There's the Mission San Juan. All right, let's see what's inside. Texas walking stick, huh? Mm -hmm. Interesting looking insect, for sure. Yeah, we're not in Florida anymore. I have never seen one of these before. Now, you, now you're disturbing the local fauna. Coming up here, the restored convento. Over 
here we have the ruins of the, of the old church over here and that's an unfinished church. Well, we're on a mission to see the missions. So we got one more and then I think we're gonna go eat something. It's called Mission Espada, Misión Espada, El Camino Real de los Tejas. And this is the last mission, which is actually a good thing, not because, the, I mean, the missions are lovely, but getting hungry. By the way, that saying that time flies when you're having fun, totally true. I mean, time has flown. It's almost 1 p.m. now, and we just left like five minutes ago, yeah. the, the campground, right? But it's getting a lot hotter, so this is um, the last mission of the day. And um, yeah, I'm ready for an IPA. Actually, this one is pretty small, yet beautiful. This is pretty. This, uh, this looks like something I've seen in a, uh, like in a magazine poster or some, some somewhere. Like a, like, a nice, like a nice restaurant too, like yeah, like, yeah. Jeff, like he was saying. That, that doesn't have the church. Too yeah. Oh, yeah. well, here's the church. We'll we'll have to talk softly. Oh, push. <laughs> here's the altar. Not all that impressive after what we've seen, but the outside, it's beautiful. So tastefully decorated with all these flowers, it kind of gives me a sense of deja vu, like I've seen this before, even though I've never been here. And back by the Alamo we are. The Bible says you don't know God. You know what's gonna happen oh, to you, Chris? Okay. We're gonna have lunch at the river walk and God then we'll continue. Yeah, they got them scooters here too. Believe it or not, I've never been to one of these places. This is starting to look a little more like the river walk. There's a beer garden. We're a little disoriented, but I think we've ended up by the River Center Mall. Hmm, actually, no, it's the Hyatt. I just realized we are inside the Hyatt. <laughs> It's getting hot in here. The river walk. We're gonna get on one of those tomorrow. Very picturesque, as, as you all can see. After much deliberation, we've decided to eat at the Rio Rio Tex Mex Cantina. Chips and salsa, mm, fajitas, and other stuff. This is called borracho beans. You see all these tourists here with their little camcorders. I'm telling you, very touristy town here. Uh, hey, Paul. By the way, that Rio Rio was pretty good. The, the food. 
We had, uh, they, didn't, they didn't have my Dos X Amber, but they had a regular Dos X, which is fine. And um, yeah. This is what we need back at the RV park. San Antonio, after you. There's one more thing we want to see here today, and that's the historic 160-year-old Menger Hotel, which is supposedly haunted. Let's save the rest of San Antonio for tomorrow. Menger, here, we, here it is. This is the haunted hotel here. Menger Hotel, 160 years old. Adjacent to the hotel, here we have King's X Toy Soldier Store. And they have this great variety of hand-painted toy soldiers and military miniatures. Most fascinating are the dioramas that they've created using their own miniatures. This one, most appropriately, depicting the Battle of the Alamo. Here's the Menger Bar, where Teddy Roosevelt recruited the men of the 1st US Volunteer Cavalry, better known as the Rough Riders, which played a key role in the outcome of the Spanish-American War in Cuba. Here they have a small exhibit about the Rough Riders. Also about the hotel, and the Alamo. Well, I think we've had enough history for one day, don't you think? We're gonna return to the campground and tomorrow we'll do Alamo City's Chocolate Factory, the tower, the river walk, the brewery, oh, lots to come. Uh, with that, we successfully mastered the San Antonio public transportation system. That's our report. Let's do it. Day walking, Miami style. <laughs> well, good morning. Scott and Lisa, owners of Alamo City Chocolate Factory, they are viewers of my videos actually, and they've invited me to visit their shop here in San Antonio. Here we are at the Alamo City Chocolate Factory. San Antonio. And she's starting to prepare our Jamaican rum ganache. So right. I make the recipe the day before, and then after it's chilled, we mark it and cut it. Each piece is hand cut, and then we'll dip it in one of the, in the dark vat right mm -hmm. there, that big vat there. Right. On the right mm -hmm. is a 54% dark chocolate. On the back wall, it's, it's a lot of our popular molds we did. 
Wonderful. Somebody comes in here and says, my son just started guitar class, you know. So we said, great, you know, we've got some little guitars over there, we can make them that. Scott and Lisa give me an extended tour of their shop. And you know me and chocolate. I had to take a few samples. Ooh, and they have ice cream. They are such a nice, welcoming couple. It was great fun to meet uh, Scott and Lisa here at the at the Alamo City Chocolate Factory, and I got myself some chocolate. Right, took the bus and came here to the Alamo once again because this is where we're gonna meet the rest of the group. all these models of the Alamo, how it looked throughout the different eras. And uh, I wonder where these people are. There it is, big cannon in front of the Alamo. Well, we're going to the Tower of the Americas. If you recall, a couple of days ago we went to the bar, but today Paul and Tina got us tickets to the observation deck for 360 degree views of the city. I guess when you pay, they take you up the elevator with a nicer view. Actually, let's go down to the lower level, to the outdoor deck. So, here we are. Enjoy the view. There's the Fairmount Hotel, which they moved five blocks from its original location back in 1985, at the time setting the record for the largest building ever moved. Can you see the Cenotaph Monument down there? Well, right next to it, that's the Alamo. And that's the Riverwalk. I said it when we were here last week, but I'll say it again just in case you haven't seen that episode yet. From 1968 to 1996, this was the tallest observation tower in the United States. Then they built the stratosphere in Las Vegas and that one took the title. We can even see the airport all the way out there. Hmm, nice pool. One last time, let's see the whole river walk. They have some exhibits on the upper level with some old pictures. And the legend with the different landmarks you can see out there. Let's head back down. Down here they have some pictures of the tower under construction. It's truly fascinating. Well, we're gonna... We're gonna get on the boat now. Check it out. The tower of the Americas. I kept calling it the Pan American Tower. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm gonna practice first in Coral Gables with the scooters they have in Miami. I wanna make a and fool the... of myself alone first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I'll, I'll be driving like a maniac on the sidewalk at 30 miles per hour. It's getting hot in here. Whew. Gonna get on the boat. It's a long line today. Yes, and the heat is oppressive. But we're in good spirits. Many boats pass and none of them pick us up. Until ours finally arrives. Backwards. 
We begin this time by the River Center Mall. So we're going to see everything from a slightly different perspective compared to last week. Here our guide makes a joke about the vegetation and we get a more tactile experience. Here's the statue of Saint Anthony, which gives the city of San Antonio its name. The Saint Joseph Catholic Church back there. We saw a lot of this back in episode 4, so I'm just going to edit a quick montage here. And if you want to see this in more detail from a slightly different perspective, make sure you check out that episode. The Rosita Bridge and the Hilton Palacio del Rio which they finished in record time because it is basically pre-built Legos. La Villita and the amphitheater and the stage with the five bells actually representing the five Spanish missions. It is such a delightful river cruise that I don't really mind taking it twice. You may have noticed that even though the premise of this trip was to attend a rally, this hasn't really been a traditional rally. And the concept behind RV Caravan With Us, the company that Paul and Tina started, is more like an RV tour company. They take care of all the logistics and we're still able to have the communal experience of a rally while traveling in a caravan. This was their maiden rally, and I'd say this weekend has been a success. And everybody has had a great time sharing the experience, and I hope we can do many, many more. Check them out at rvcaravanwithus.com. Ooh, nice. Dinner cruise. Let's grab a sangria. This guy has a free in my RV t-shirt. <sighs> Let's go eat. We're starving. 26th president of the United States. I didn't see this statue of Teddy Roosevelt when we were here yesterday. And that's that famous Mango Hotel. Okay, I'm gonna get lost. I better. Scooters galore all over the city. We're gonna take the bus to the brewery. Viva buses, really good service, outstanding. Now let's jaywalk as we usually do. Here we are, Blue Star Brewery, where we're gonna have our last supper tonight and a meetup so I can meet some of my San Antonian viewers. We have the whole second floor reserved and this is a really cool place with all these vintage-looking bicycles. Eventually, we arranged the table so we could all eat together. Well, here we are at the Blue Star Brewery, and, uh, and we're, we're, we're gonna have a spectacular night here with everybody who came to, to share stories from the road. And I want to thank particularly Tina and Paul, yeah. who have done a great job taking care of all of us for the past couple of days. And I want to thank all of you. Yes. What are the chances two Miami people getting together in Texas? Yeah, this looks amazing. All right, the dinner was delicious. And let me see what Paul has set up here. Oh, he's selling stickers, t-shirts, CDs. After dinner, we get a few visitors. And it is so nice to finally be able to put together some of the faces and names and voices. One of the best aspects of this lifestyle, meeting people from all different places. 
Special shout out to Kevin and his family who produced the Beyond the River Walk podcast. Back to the campground we go. And uh, I would like to say thank you to all the participants of the rally for being part of this. And uh, I really hope to see you on the road again sometime. Riding, riding, my RV. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to spend some time away from big cities. We've visited three of the largest cities in Texas, and we're still missing Dallas, and one of these days we'll revisit El Paso, but right now, the desert is calling. On the next episode, we are going to drive all the way to the very edge of the Chihuahuan Desert, and uh, we'll take a hike all the way to Mexico. Well, almost. We'll stop short of crossing the Rio Grande, so stay tuned. Riding in 